Hey there, and welcome to Goddess on the Rise. I am your host, Sarah Berg, and this podcast is all about empowering women, living in your truth, loving your body as it is in your journey to self-love. You can find this podcast to be real, raw, authentic, and truth. So buckle up, girlfriend, because we are going for a ride. Hey, hello, hi, what is up, what is good? I missed you guys last week, as you probably already know, because you're a listener of the show, I had no podcast episode release, and it actually was not planned. (laughs) Story of my freaking life. You feel me? As you probably know, because you're following me on social media, you probably watch my stories on Instagram and Facebook, and you see my post. I am having foot surgery coming up, and it's actually tomorrow, Thursday the 17th, and whew, feeling a little nervous, not going to lie. Um, it's a little bit more intense than what I had expected it to be, so um, not really looking forward to that part. Um, but you know what? I really spent uh, the last two weeks just preparing, preparing my body, preparing my house, cleaned every little freaking inch and crevice I could possibly see. So now I'll feel better about just laying around on the couch, not doing a damn thing. (sighs) I can't wait. (laughs) Um, So because of that, um, I really just want to come on here and and chat with you guys because a couple things came up as I was like prepping and getting ready. I was prepping my body and like I said, I talked about this on my stories a lot, right? I noticed that like my views on my stories started going up. You were obsessed with it. You guys wanted to know more. You guys were voting on polls like, uh, yeah, I want to know more. Tell me more. Um, tell me everything that you possibly know. And so I did. (laughs) So, because of that, make sure if you're not already following me on Instagram and Facebook, please do. And um, the reason for that is because you won't miss anything. You'll know everything about everything. So, um, but today a couple things had came up when I was, you know, prepping and getting ready. And it was like this epiphany I had. And I was like, you know what? I want to share this. Um, as a lot of you may know, and maybe you don't know, but I used to be a beach body coach and it was an MLM and I loved it. I was in it for six years. Technically, I am still a coach because I will absolutely reap the discount that I could possibly get because I still use some of their products. Like their pre-workout is probably the only pre-workout that I'm obsessed with that has great ingredients. They also have Hydrate, which is a better version of um, like a Powerade or a Gatorade. And it it actually leaves me feeling really, really good. So um, it's it's to replace electrolytes, actually. If you guys want to know more about that, you can always message me. I will absolutely send you the link for that. But as far as actively coaching, I realized like I just was super, super uncomfortable with it. Um, it started because I, I really wanted to launch something more. I wanted more. I wanted to help people in a deeper way because what I had noticed was that these people that I would coach, they would join my challenge groups, okay? And they would do the fitness routine and the meal plans and some would get results and some would not. And if they did or if they didn't, eventually they would fall off track. I'm putting that in the 
biggest like quotation marks you could possibly freaking imagine because I've learned that there's no such thing as falling off track, right? Um, But they would fall off track or um, then they would stop working out. They would stop eating super, super clean and they would gain all their weight back and they wouldn't have the results that they had had. And then they would do it again and then they would do it again and then they would do it again. And I was like, wait, this is bullshit. Like, why? Why are we doing this? Like, why Why do we have to keep jumping back on track? Why are these meal plans not working? Well, the meal plans only work if you follow them to a T 100% of the time. And let me tell you what, following a meal plan to a T is not a way to freaking live. It's just not. I m- Maybe, you know, maybe there's some people out there that do but I just don't believe in it. And the reason why is because they're restrictive. And as someone who has struggled from an eat with an eating disorder, that restriction, it freaking ruined me. I would have feelings of guilt. I would have feelings of shame. I would be uncomfortable. I would try and try and try again and fail and fail and fail again. And I couldn't figure out why. What was wrong with me? What was I doing wrong? I'm just this obese obese fat person. And I was just so uncomfortable. And I freaking hated it. I hated it. And I... I just thought that if I could just really do it 110%, like I will finally get results. And then if I finally get results, like I'll be one of the best. I'll have all these customers. I'll make all this money. Like people will see. That's the biggest load of crock I've ever freaking believed in. And it pisses me off. It really pisses me off that a company, I feel like, preys on this. They prey on people who chase these before and afters. They brainwash people into thinking that these meal plans are going to get them results and they'll keep those results if they keep doing the meal plan. But the meal plan is so freaking restrictive, right? You can only have this amount of carbs and then there's dirty carbs, carbs and clean carbs. And then there's, um, oh, just I I could really go down the rabbit hole here, but I'm going to reel it back in for a second because the importance of this, the reason why for me that this was awful is because I had an eating disorder big time. And when I was 13 years old, 13, 14, I think, um, actually it was more like 14, 15, um, I was dating this guy, right? I think you guys have probably have heard the story if you're a longtime listener. And if not, go back. If I didn't tell it, then I guess, you know, whatever. Um, But anyways, I'd been dating this guy for years. Um, And he had told me, or I I had uh, told him that I was sick. And I was sick because I was wanting to skip meals. And I did. I wouldn't eat, hoping that I would lose weight and become really, really skinny. Here's the problem. I was really skinny. I was not that. I I was not fat. I was skinny. I was fit. I was, you know, a size maybe six, eight. I don't even know what that looks like anymore, to be honest with you. But I was not that big. Maybe 120 pounds, 130, somewhere in there. And the problem was is... Ugh. I'm just going to come out and say it. The problem was definitely me, but also the problem was, is that he had wandering eyes and we weren't exclusive. And so I would compare myself to the girls that he was with or would show me or I would see and I would want to be them because if I was them, then he would want me. That means that he would love me. And that means that I was good enough. Do you see how the mind works? Maybe you have been there. And I'm just going to throw it out there. He was young too. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. So this like led me to spiral, right? And I, at one time I told him, Like, I am sick. And he didn't get it because I couldn't explain it because I was embarrassed. And so he went out and he bought me chicken noodle. 
chicken noodle soup. And I thought at that time that was the sweetest thing. Like, oh my God, he cares about me. He bought me chicken noodle soup. But from there, it just kind of spiraled, right? Like I would still be skipping meals or picking up my food or only eating in front of people. And after that, it just went even deeper. So then I stopped skipping meals or I'd skip meals in front of people or only eat in front of people. And then when I was hungry, I would binge. Like when the starvation was too much, like I would go deep, right? And this also stemmed from having a, um, you know, my father that had adopted me, he had told me like, you're too fat. You can't lick the spoon. You know, he would make me do sit-ups in front of people. This is, this is really deep stuff. I'm not going to lie. And I know that this, I know now this is where it all started. This is where my issues had started. And before I go too deep here, I'm going to come back to the main point. This is why meal plans are not for everyone. Meal plans are for a very normal person who has, I don't even know if this is true. I'm just going to tell you that this is how I feel. Um, And maybe a normal person could tell me different or um, agree with me. I don't know. But to me, meal plans will only help a very normal person who has a very smaller body, who doesn't have an issue with weight loss, who has had a very normal life. And I should take that word normal back. They have had a cookie cutter life, I should say, because I think normal lives are more like there's been trauma there because the more and more I talk to clients, the more and more I talk to you, I realize that all of our lives, I feel like are normal. What I've gone through is normal because so many other women have gone through it. So I want to say that their lives have been almost perfect. They never had an eating disorder. They never had a problem with their weight. I don't think that meal plans are made for weight loss. I truly don't. And I think, you can quote me on this, meal plans are shit. (laughs) I'm just going to come out and say it. They are shit. They make you feel like shit. Because if you do not follow it 100%, you have feelings of failure. You have feelings of not being enough. You have feelings of, my God, I'm never going to lose this weight. I'm never going to be good enough. I'm not going to feel good. Meal plans are shit. Especially, especially if you have someone who cannot follow it 100%. And that was me, right? So I would have these meal plans. They were already restrictive. And then I had to restrict even more because I had food allergies. I had... Um, milk allergies, dairy, the milk and dairy allergies is the same thing, but you know, sometimes people get tripped up and think it's just milk I'm allergic to. It's actually all dairy products like cheese. Um, like it's, it's in everything. Just, just turn around a box of food and look, and I guarantee you it'll say contains milk or wheat. And if it contains either one of those things, guess what? Your girl can't have it. Um, or I get sick, which let me tell you what. I need to work on that because I'm not very good at saying no sometimes. Um, But anyways, these are like things that I would have to take out on top of what was already restricting in the meal plan. Can you imagine? You're already restricted and then you have to restrict even more. No wonder why this made my eating disorder even like more, like even more intense. Like I was like, freaking so restrictive that I would binge. I would overeat. Um, I want to tell you guys, there is a big difference between binging and overeating. And maybe I will go into that one day, but right now, um, I just want to know, like, I did not mean to use those words interchangeably. Binging. That's what I had. I would binge. And binge is when you go and you eat, usually somewhere private because you don't want to do it in front of anybody because it's shameful. You feel guilty. You feel disgusting. And you'll go like in a closet or when your husband's not home or through a drive through before you get home and you order so much food that you eat all that food and it makes you sick. That is what a true binge is. Okay. It's eating so much that you feel miserable. You do not feel good. And then on top of not feeling good, you are dealing with feelings like shame, guilt, disgust with yourself. 
And I did this for years, years, you guys. Now, back in, I want to say 2014, 2015, I met my husband. I was bigger like I am now. And he loved me anyways. And then I started to get into Beachbody and I lost a lot of weight, right? A lot. A lot of things were happening at that time. I wanted to look amazing for our wedding. I wanted to look amazing for when he came back from deployment and I was moving to Virginia Beach. I wanted to look amazing in a bikini. And I thought to look amazing in all those things, I needed to lose weight. Okay. And so I did. And it didn't really feel good. I think what I felt in those moments was happiness and bliss, but I don't think it actually came from my body. I think it came from everybody complimenting me on my body. I think it came from me fitting into a smaller size and the praise I would get from the Beachbody community, the praise I would get from the community community that I had created. I created this community that it was okay for people to comment on my body. And because they were commenting on my body, it made me feel something. I think that's where it came from. It was intense. And even though I felt really beautiful, it wasn't enough. I had to lose more. I wanted a six pack. I wanted definition all over. I wanted to be smaller. I had goal sizes, goal weight. And I honestly, man, I wish I could go back to myself at that time and just be like, wake the fuck up. (laughs) This isn't real life. Like this isn't anything that's sustainable. And it wasn't. It wasn't. I slowly gained more weight and then gained more weight and then had crazy awful health issues and gained more weight. And for those years that I kept gaining, I kept restricting. And I kept telling myself, okay, if you follow this 100%, I guarantee you, you will lose weight. And then a new Beachbody would come out, a new Beachbody program would come out and I would be like, oh, I'm going to try that. And I'm going to do it 100%. One of those programs was 80 day obsession. Maybe you've heard of it. Maybe not. Maybe this is all new to you. And I followed it and I followed the time nutrition, which means basically you're eating around the clock and you're eating certain foods at certain times. And I lost weight. Of course I lost weight. I lost weight because I was actually feeding myself. My metabolism was revving up because I was actually eating meals. But boy, did I feel miserable. And the reason why I felt miserable is because I was literally stuffing myself with food around a certain time. And the reason why I felt miserable from this is because I had health issues going on at the time. Major health issues. My body was filled with parasites, um, H. pylori bacteria. I had mold in my system. My joints ached. I was uncomfortable. I was hurting because I had all these other things going on. But because this this workout program told me to eat around the clock and to do these long ass workouts, I mean, they're not too long. They're like 45 minutes to an hour. I lost weight. And then I finished the program. What do you think happened? I gained it all back. And let me tell you, it wasn't overnight, but it did happen. And also, let me tell you, This was hard, very hard on me because what would happen was I would post pictures online and once again, people would comment on my body. And have you noticed that people look a lot different in pictures online than they do in real life? So I would feel shameful, like, oh my gosh, I look really skinny in this picture or I look really fit in this picture, but what if they see me in real life? What if they realize that I am just an imposter? This imposter syndrome was so real and it carried on for a very long time. And then I slowly, this whole entire time that I'm, I'm posting and I'm this beach buddy coach, I'm preaching self-love and self-confidence to everybody because I felt like I had finally found it with losing weight. 
But then when I gained all the weight back, I was like, you know what? I'm still going to love myself. I want to love myself through this. But now where I'm at now is at this really profound level of self-love and self-confidence. Like I can walk around naked and still feel really confident. I can sit here with my stomach and still feel super confident. I can just be me and not be triggered, but also recognizing my triggers, right? And this, all of this that I'm talking about, this is why I think meal plans are shit. And I know I'm going to get some backlash for this. But I also think the company, Beachbody, is shit. Yes, I know. I just said that. The company I was with for six years, I think they are shit. They did a really good job. A really good job. A round of applause for making me believe that I needed a before and after. They did a really good job of making me feel like I needed to cover up my body because all they would show for plus size women are plus size women who are modifiers, who couldn't do the workout, who were covered up. All the other people were in sports bras and shorts, but the plus size women, they were not. They were covered up. They were in t-shirts and leggings. It was bullshit. And I believed in it for a very long time, but not anymore. Not anymore. Now I recognize that I can exist how I am. And now a lot of times I get a lot of backlash for that. Like, oh my God, you're promoting obesity. How am I promoting obesity? I'm promoting you to love yourself exactly how you are. If you want to lose weight, that's great. Go for it, girlfriend. Do it in the right way, though. A way that feels good for you. If you want to exist how you are, then fucking do it and own it. Okay? Because there is nothing about you that needs to change. I can tell you what does need to change. The beauty industry and the diet industry. That needs to change. Not you, honey. You are not the problem at all. Meal plans, things that make us feel like shit about our bodies. That is the actual problem. You existing exactly how you are is not, is not the problem. And this is why. Meal plans are shit, friends. (laughs) I feel like I could go on so much more um, in detail about this, but I want to keep it to that today. I want you to know and I want you to hear that there is nothing wrong with your body. You can replay that as many times as you need. And I'm going to say it again. There is nothing wrong with your body. Sit with that as long as you need. Maybe you cry about it. (sighs) Maybe it brings something up for you. And for me, it brings up all of you. All of you listening. I want you to know I'm holding you right now. I'm holding space for you. And I'm holding healing for you. And I want you to know that what society, what the diet culture, and what the beauty industry says about you, it's not true. They are a billion dollar industry. They don't truly care about you or your results or your skin or the makeup you wear. They just care about making a buck. You can be big and fat, and plus size, whatever you want to identify as, and still be fit, and still feel good. I work out almost every day, and now I do it for different reasons. I do it because it feels good to move my body. It feels good to have stamina, to have flexibility, 
It feels good to love my freaking body. And that's why I work out. I eat healthy because when I don't, I feel sick. I love my body and I treat it right and I am still fat and plus size. So maybe this is your wake up call. Maybe this is the realization that everything you have been told is a freaking lie and you can love you just the way you are. I love you so much. And I really hope you enjoy this episode as much as I enjoyed creating it for you.